Scaffolding can be overloaded by placing too much weight on the structure. Overloading is a common cause of scaffold collapse. In general, a scaffold must be able to support its own weight plus four times the maximum intended load. The intended load includes people, materials, tools, and any additional components the scaffold will support. Most scaffolding components have a designated load capacity given by the manufacturer. For the most part, components from different scaffold systems should never be mixed and matched. This is especially true of components that are made of different metals, because there can be a chemical reaction between the metals that weakens them. The competent person can decide if components from different systems can be used safely together. There are many other factors that must be taken into account when determining load capacity, including the scaffold height, the material being used, and the amount of cross bracing. OSHA has several tables that give loading rules based on these factors. Fires are one of the most hazardous emergencies you may face at work. Knowing what a fire is can help you prevent them from occurring and fight them when they do break out. The fire triangle is a model that shows the elements that must be present for fire to exist. The elements are heat, fuel, and oxygen. A fire needs all three to burn. Take away any of these three factors, heat, fuel, or oxygen, and the fire cannot continue. Your workplace will use one of several different types of warning signals to alert workers in the event of an emergency. These warning signals may include, but are not limited to, sirens and horns, radios, verbal communication, talking or yelling. Your employer should explain the warning signals used at your mine during training. Be certain you understand and remember the signals and know how to respond when they are used. Understanding the visual limitations of haul trucks, dozers, and loaders can save your life. These visual limitations, known as blind spots, are areas where the operator's view is blocked by the equipment itself. Haul trucks in particular have very large, dangerous blind spots. As a general rule, the larger the truck, the larger the blind spot. Blind spots are typically measured in terms of the six-foot visibility and grade visibility points. The six-foot visibility point is the horizontal distance from the driver's position in the cab to the last point at which a six-foot tall person will be blocked from view by the vehicle. In other words, drivers cannot see pedestrians within the six-foot visibility point. Grade visibility is the horizontal distance from the driver's position in the cab to the point at which the driver can see the ground. The traffic pattern at a surface mine establishes the safe flow of materials and equipment. Be aware that two-way traffic may not follow the familiar right-hand method common on public U.S. roads. Traffic patterns may vary according to the mine and may change as mining operations change. Following are some safety reasons why non-standard traffic patterns may be appropriate for mining operations. Driving on the left may reduce problems associated with the blind spot to the right of the vehicle. When approaching a dump point, for example, driving left may offer better visibility for safe maneuvering and positioning of the truck. When driving on the left, truck cabs are positioned to the outside of the lanes. This way, if two trucks traveling in opposite directions collide, the contact is less likely to occur on the driver's sides of the vehicles. Loaded trucks may require travel on the left where the inside lane of benched or elevated haul roads offers a safer distance from drop-offs where erosion and unconsolidated ground conditions can weaken the integrity of the road. Surface mining operations generally include the following. 
drilling and blasting, extraction, hauling, stockpiling, and processing. Although specific operations and processes may differ from mine to mine depending upon the material being mined and the ultimate output product, each of these operational elements falls generally into the common functions of extraction and processing. Front-end loaders, or simply loaders, are large, typically tire-mounted vehicles with a deep, wide bucket mounted at the front. Loaders are used to load mined material into haul trucks and feeders, push or dump overburden, and manage stockpile or refuse areas. In sand and gravel operations, loaders may also be used for excavation. The blade should be adjusted so that the top of the blade is approximately one half inch higher than the board to be cut. To adjust the blade, first loosen the lock knob on the blade height hand wheel. Then turn the blade height hand wheel to adjust the blade to the desired height. Always tighten the lock knob after adjusting the blade height. To make a rip cut, follow these steps. 1. Set the blade height about a half inch higher than the board to be cut. 2. Set the rip fence at the desired width measurement from the blade. 3. Move the blade guard into position. 4. Lay the board on the table in front of the blade, tight against the rip fence. Never let the board touch the blade until the saw comes up to full speed. 5. Turn the saw on and let the blade come up to speed. 6. Carefully feed the board to the saw blade. Stand to the side of the board and blade such that if the board were to kick back, that it would not strike you. An excavation is any man-made cavity created in the ground by removing earth. A trench is a kind of excavation. It is a narrow channel that is deeper than it is wide. The term trench is typically applied to channels that are less than 15 feet wide at their base. Excavating is one of the most dangerous operations in construction work. There are an average of 70 deaths each year in the U.S. due to excavation accidents and thousands more injuries. Most of these accidents could be prevented by following simple safety procedures. Even if you are not in charge of overseeing an excavation, you should be familiar with the general hazards of this work. Knowing how to spot potential problems will help keep you and your coworkers safe. Texture is how we describe the grain and particle sizes in a soil. Soil particles are grouped into what are called soil separates. The three soil separates are sand, silt, and clay. Sand is a loose, gritty substance and is the largest of the three particle sizes. Silt particles are much smaller than sand and form a smooth, fine substance. Clay is made up of microscopic particles that pack tightly together to form a sticky, cohesive substance. Throttling valves are used to regulate the amount of fluid that passes through the valve. Like an on-off valve, a throttling valve can be fully open to allow maximum flow or fully closed to stop flow. But a throttling valve can also be partially open to let some of the fluid pass through. Throttling valves can be used to control downstream conditions, including the flow rate, pressure, or temperature.
It is important to properly match the valve coefficient to a valve's intended use in a system. If the valve coefficient is too small, not enough fluid will pass through the valve, and upstream equipment, such as pumps, can be damaged. If the valve coefficient is too large, the following problems could occur. The valve may be more expensive, larger, or heavier than necessary. The valve or pipes may be damaged as a result of too much flow. Or, the valve may experience the bathtub stopper effect. This occurs when the valve is near its closed position and is rapidly sucked closed, sending damaging waves through the system. Violence instigated by people committing crimes results in approximately 85% of workplace violence fatalities. Examples include robbery, shoplifting, and trespassing. Workers who handle cash or work at locations where cash is present are at a higher risk of crime-related violence. Examples of these types of jobs include taxi drivers, cashiers, and bank employees. Some states and cities have regulations in place to help prevent violence to workers in these types of high-risk jobs. One example is a New York law that requires taxi cabs to have bulletproof barriers. There are many conditions that can cause a wire rope to become dangerous. Immediately notify your supervisor if you see abrasion or wear. This can occur during the normal life of the rope. If the diameter of the rope has been reduced by more than 10%, the rope should be taken out of service. Bird caging. This is when the rope strands have become separated, creating a bird cage effect. Bird caging is caused by sudden release of tension and greatly weakens a rope. Broken strands. Broken strands can occur within the rope or on the surface. The internal breaks are harder to find, but they are very dangerous. Surface breaks can be spotted visually or detected by running a cloth over the surface to find snags.